If you try and drive your RV too many miles in a day, bad things can happen. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And it can be hard to live amazing if you're making newbie mistakes in RV life, particularly on travel days. And one mistake we definitely don't want you to make is crashing your camper, because I actually crashed and totaled a camper. So we wanted to make this video to talk to you specifically about travel days and how many miles you should drive in a day. Yeah, it's so easy to just get into a groove and, and just put too many miles on, too much windshield time. Now we did a recent video where we talked about people who were quitting RV life. And you know, one set of people that we met had just been driving too much. You know, they'd driven across the country in three weeks from Florida to Oregon. We're going to help you untangle this mess because there's a lot of things to think about and there are things you can do to make it easy on yourself as you try and do your trip planning. I mean, if you're a professional driver, if you're a retired truck driver, you're used to 10 hours on the road. Um, actually, I don't even know what the, the regulations are. <laughs> there are regulations for that, that they can only drive so, so many hours at, at one given time. For me, I don't like to drive more than six hours. And even that can be a long day. So here are some things to consider. So the first thing that you want to consider is your rig. If you're driving a camper van, you probably can go a lot further than if you've got a big old fifth wheel and you know, you're, you're towing something really long. More class A with a toad. I mean, you know, a 40 foot class A with a, with a toad behind you, you're, it's a lot of mass moving down the highway that you're responsible for. Right. And if you are towing, you generally are going to be going slower. We hope you're going to be going slower if you're towing. If you are towing at something in California, the speed limit uh, maxes at 55. You're not going to be going 65 if you're towing something. Yeah, let me talk about that just briefly. <laughs> <laughs> not a trip goes by that somebody, we're go doing 60 miles an hour in the slow lane and some weekender, probably, I assume weekender, blows past us like we're standing still with their trailer in tow. And I'm thinking, man, there's an accident waiting to happen. You know, I hope they don't get into an accident. I, don't, I hope they don't hurt themselves or others, but you need to consider what you're driving, the amount of weight that you have behind you and how long it's gonna take you to stop. You know, on the interstate, I will drive 60, 62 miles an hour. I like to hold it around 60 miles an hour in the slow lane. Uh, we're retired, I'm retired anyway. And uh, I'm not. <laughs> So I'm in no hurry to get anywhere. Yeah. And that was a learning for me. So when I first started full-time RV living, by the way, Paul and I have both been on the road for over two years. When I first started, I had to get used to being passed, okay? Like by truckers. I had never had that experience in my life. But as an RV traveler, that's all the time. All the time, you're there and a, and a trucker is going by all the time. And you just have to get used to that. That race car mentality from when you've got your little city car and you're zipping around that is dangerous to have if you're driving an rv yes it is on, on a recent trip from san diego to menifee we were almost to our exit and all of a sudden this car comes whipping up on our left side and then cuts in front of us and goes to an off-ramp that they were apparently trying to get to i missed their back bumper by inches <laughs> I mean, literally inches. And that's another reason to be going slower is the people out there traveling with you don't understand the basic laws of physics. We need a lot of space to, to stop. And so you really don't want to be going fast just to protect yourself, even if you're doing everything right, to protect yourself from the people around you who may not be doing everything right. Okay, so here are some things to think about when figuring out how long you'll be on the road because there are some conditions where you'll be driving slower. Yeah, if you're gonna be going on a curvy mountain road, you're going to, your average speed's gonna drop. Uh, I would guess probably around average 40 miles an hour, 35 to 40 miles an hour in, in that situation. Whereas if you're going, you know, like we were a few months back when we were going to South Dakota on, on I-90, a long straight stretch of highway. I mean, that's, you know, you could easily 
average 60 miles an hour right. um, doing that. Well, even flat curvy roads, like when we were crossing Oregon, we were going a lot slower because we cannot take those curves. You know when the curves say 35 miles an hour? Sometimes we have to slow down to 30. Yeah, yeah. We usually, the rule of thumb is five miles an hour under what it's, what it's listed as. At least that's what we're comfortable with. Although, the road up to Idlewild, that is a 50 mile an hour road. And there are some curves that I can't even imagine. I mean, you can do 50 in a sports car, but it's, uh, yeah, we get, I went up that whole thing in th 35 miles an hour. Yeah. That's the other thing is you want to be comfortable and you may find that your comfort level is a lot lower than the speed limit. And this is something to think about because when you're doing your trip planning and it tells you it takes an hour to get there, well, if it's curvy roads, if it's uh, through the mountains, it's going to take longer. I always add an hour, 30, 30 minutes to an hour if it's interstate. 30 minutes if it's if it's mountain roads and I, I just add an hour to the calculated time and then another area where you're going to be slower or certainly I am and you are too is urban areas oh. you really have to back way up because people are getting on the interstate and they're on it for a half mile or a mile and they're getting off so people are on and off and not knowing the roads that well and and where the on-ramps are whether it's on the right or the left and and sometimes you don't find that out until until you're too close to make the change to get to the to the right side of the road that yeah. you need to be on. That's another great tip. Unfamiliar roads are going to slow you down. If you're traveling in Washington or Alaska, there's a rule in those states that say that if you've got five or more cars behind you, even if you're going to speed limit, you have to pull over and let them pass. Now I understand, you know, the the going under the speed limit and allowing people to get by you. I don't understand if I'm going the speed limit, then I have to find a place to pull over. I don't like that law either because I don't want to keep looking and counting cars behind me when I'm driving. This yeah. is most likely for, you know, a curvy road. So, you know, I've got to be responsible for the people behind me. I've got to count them and then I've got to look for a pull off. But to follow that law, whether you're in Washington state or Alaska or wherever else they have that law, you're going to be adding a lot of time to your trip planning because of all that pulling over that you'll have to do. You know, if I'm going under the speed limit, then by all means, I'm going to, I don't need to be told that I have to do it. I pull over and let people go around me. Well, that's really a good point. If you are aware that you're going below the speed limit, you absolutely should pull over as a courtesy for the people behind you. And that's something else to build into your trip planning time. Prepack. I'm always ready to go first thing in the morning. It depends on the site you're in, whether you can hook up to the, to the rig the night before. Uh, the last night I spent in El Centro before I drove to Santa Barbara to come and to rescue you. Rescue me. <laughs> I, was, I had the, the trailer connected to the truck and I was ready to go. All I had to do was jump out, pull the power cord and the water hose and, and, uh, couple, and do a walk around, jump in the truck, and I was out of there in, in under 15 minutes. Right, and the reason why you want to do this is that you want to save your energy that day for driving. So don't wear yourself out in the morning folding up your patio mat and putting your chairs away. Just be ready to go. You may not want to be hooked up to the truck with your slides out. We are certainly in that camp. We've heard that it's not good for the rig because it, the rig might be might be torqued a little bit. And, and, you know, think about what a slide is. It's a box going into another box and, and everything has to be lined up perfectly. Another tip is to build in breaks and rest stops. You know, we typically go about 90 minutes, right? Yeah. And then we take a break, but we do not follow a hard and fast rule. There's definitely been some times where we've driven and then we need a break after 30 minutes. When you do stop, make it a point to walk around, kind of get the blood flowing, take a you know breath of fresh air. Yeah, don't be a slave to time or miles. Just, you know, listen to your body. You know when it's time to, to take a break. And do it. And lose the agenda. This is a huge tip. If you've watched my camper crash video, then you know that having that goal in mind to rush, 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 that can actually be quite dangerous in the camping world. Yeah, having to get some places usually uh, can lead to bad things. Be willing to say, you know, I guess we're not going to make it there today or, or, or tonight. You know, it's dark. We don't want to drive in the dark. 
let's find a spot to pull over and, and, and uh, take a break and start over in the morning. It's not the destination, it's the trip. Make the whole thing fun. Don't make it work to be driving from point A to point B. So with that said, should we tell them how far we drive? What do we do? For us, um, 300 miles is max. I, we, or three o'clock. Or three o'clock, yeah. yeah, the th rule of threes. Three o'clock or 300 miles. Whichever comes first. Yes. Now we have done more. We and we pushed past three and we've gone past 300 miles, but that was in that trip to, to South Dakota. Where we were in a rush and we actually wore ourselves yeah. out. Yeah, we aren't gonna do that again. In your case, when you're traveling and your RV life is new to you, allow yourself to learn and you'll find what works for you that, is, that still keeps the fun in there. The whole point of this life is to have a good time. So let us know your travel tips. Did we miss anything? Yeah, we'd love to hear from you and we'd love for you to join the A-Team. Just push on the subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. All right, tell me how many cars are back behind us.